Jimmy Van on piano, and also we did a, uh, Ed Cusby did a, a solo and um, harmonica. It was wonderful. So, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living online service. I'm Heather Clark, and we start everything the same way, it seems. We are starting with lighting the flames of faith. It's a call to service. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings, come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. 
We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as Reverend Carla Shradas lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. And now Reverend Carla is going to open us in a prayer, spiritual mind treatment, I invite you to join me in this morning's opening prayer. And know as I speak these words for myself, that I'm speaking them for each one of you. God is. I am. God is. I am. God is. I am. This one divine expression is the truth of everything. And it's the truth of who I am. It is that which I am. And so this morning I recognize this truth as it floods all of my consciousness. And what I know for certain is that this place, this time together, is sacred time. It's holy time. It's time for us to celebrate the truth, our divinity, together as one mind. I know that the center that we belong to is a belonging of that one mind and that it is that thing that reminds us again and again that it is the divine that brings us all of its loving qualities its peace, its joy, its power, its good every quality of the divine belongs to us and so we claim it now and as we claim it for ourselves, we claim it for Dr. Heather, as we know that this divine one mind moves easily through her, brilliantly bringing a message to each one of us with an open heart. And as we view this through our spiritual eye, we open our spiritual ears, there is a something to be known. And so I give great thanks for this truth. Great thanks for this opportunity to share the word, to be a part of this loving center. And as I release the word, I know that this service is already a great success. And so it is. And this morning I'll be reading the Declaration of Principles. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it. And so it is. And our morning's affirmation. My freedom is the awareness that all things live together for the good of all other things. 
and for the greater good of all of life. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Carla. It takes us into our meditation time, and Alan Dale is back with us. We began the month with this chant. It's my favorite chant. Um, and it is very easy, so I know if you didn't learn it last time, you'll learn it today. It's called Ready. of those synonyms, synonyms for God you choose, but choose one of them and let just that word float in your consciousness. Let it just be who you are in this moment. And so we continue in the silence for a time.
let that bell sound bring you gently back into the awareness of your body and come back to the room and um, keep that feeling with you for the whole time that we're together. Ellen Dale is now going to sing a song for my message. Good morning, spiritual brothers and sisters. We certainly miss being with you. Um, this morning we're going to sing a song that Rick wrote that we have all sung together before. And so wherever you are, if you're in your kitchen or your office or your bedroom or your car, sing along with us because you know this one. spirituality, unchained spirituality. Today's message is the Tao of freedom, the Tao of freedom. Well, <laughs> the spirit is so good. It always arranges everything so we can practice whatever it is that the topic is about. The main, main ideas in the Tao that I'm going to talk about, and it's 181 verses, so and each verse has deep, deep meaning, so I'm pretty not, I'm sure I'm not going to get everything, but I'm going to get something. And the one thing I'm going to tell you is that the, the, the Tao 
depends on two principles. One is the principle of yin and yang, which is a both and, opposites. Opposites in harmony. So male and female, hot and cold. Uh, and you know, all the, all the others. And the other one is the Wu Wei principle. And the Wu Wei principle is the one that we've been demonstrating all weekend. And that, that, de that de Wu Wei principle is ah, trust that everything is going right, even when you don't see it, even when you can't see it, even when you're certain it's really messing up. So this, this morning, when I was getting the, the uh, visuals ready for our, because I know people are going, why didn't she show that? Why didn't she show that? We, all, we always have the words for the Declaration of Principles. Because the computer stopped working this morning, that's why. It's all ready for next week will be fine, I'm sure. But hint, someone may need to look at the computer because it keeps giving us messages that it's finished. It keeps saying, no more room in here, and go away. Well, it doesn't actually say go away, but you know, you get the idea. So it quit working as we were ready to go. So that's one of the things, and ah, more practice. Yesterday for the wonderful tribute that we had to Nilda Lindgren, and I know some of you went online to watch, and the first thing Reverend Karen said to me was, what a wonderful, elegant service it was. And Wu Wei, it was, it was so um, not, it was so not the way we had planned it to be. Because we here couldn't hear what people were hearing. We could not hear Nilla's birthday songs. We had no idea when it was ended. And when it started, we could not hear any of, those, any of those special things. We couldn't see all those beautiful pictures of her, those photos, etc. We knew they were there, but of course, um, anyway. The principle is that everything is, all contains good or God. Here's, I'm interpreting it through religious science now. That... In fact, there is nothing that ever is occurring, including this pandemic, including us being online, instead of having you all here, there is nothing that is outside of God. Everything contains that mighty moving mind, which is first cause to all creation, which is moving throughout everything, even the things we think aren't right. So there's another pair of opposites, right and wrong. Well, what about just is? Maybe it just is. Maybe there is no such thing as right or wrong. The poet Rumi knew that when he said, out beyond the field of right doing and wrong doing, I'll meet you there. And in that field, words are not needed for when we are there, there is only one of us. That whole idea of unity, the whole idea of really understanding that ah, if it's to be, if it's to be, then it depends on the consciousness of each one of us. And as long as we are making something right and making something else wrong, it's not happening. So, and this is my challenge for us this week, is to hear whatever you hear. And it can be something uh, international, national, local, or personal to you. Hear. You don't have to ignore things. But hear it with a grain of um, discernment. So you can discern that this, too, is good. As Emma, Emma Curtis Hopkins had many wonderful little sayings, and one of them was, this, too, is good, this, too, is God. And then she went on to say, and I demand to see my good in it. I demand to see my good in it. When we make that kind of impress upon consciousness, 
it does come back and it will come back to us showing us our good showing us the truth about ourselves and about life so the Tao of freedom is first of all to recognize that the only thing that could ever the only thing that ever can take away your freedom only thing that can enslave you or capture you or hold you is your own perceptions of life. My own perceptions of life have been enslaving me, I know that for sure. And, um, and letting go of things when once they've happened, letting go is another, another wonderful thing that we could learn to do. Just let go, let it go. Um, I, yesterday at noon, Julie Isola came in because we were setting something up on our camera iPad and to make sure it was easier for the whoever is doing the the camera work to find that place in the first place and um, so she came in and I told her I said well I make a I make the Friday phone call on Saturdays now so you you still get it and then I went home and forgot to make it so there was no Friday or Saturday phone call reminding you of what the topic would be and who would be singing so I just know by consciousness you already knew that it's going to be wonderful. So that is the first thing to notice is that yes, there are, there are things that we're going to love and there are things that we're not going to love. There are things that we're going to resonate with, there are things that we're not going to resonate with. And our job as spiritual beings is to find the good and lots of traditions don't like that word good the book i'm studying doesn't like people especially white people to call themselves good after 30 years of telling myself that i am good i am enough i'm made of god stuff i'm very resistant to that idea but it's for my own good because i'm learning okay so Learn to perceive correctly. Learn to see God. And if you can't see God, trust God. Trust that the law of mind is in action and the law is for you. We understand that God is love and that we are loved because we're beings, we're creatures that were created by this loving presence because it loved itself so much and it continues to love us. So let yourself be loved. Let yourself recognize the good that is all around you and in you. Recognize the wholeness that you are and the well-being that you are. And remember that faith is knowing that you know. So we teach um, we teach people to develop the faith of God. You might start with the faith in God, and that's okay. It's a good place to start. But when you develop that faith, you understand that there's no separation between you and God. Therefore, what God knows, you know. So you have the faith of God. And that faith is ultimate, all-knowing, complete. And the opposite of faith is fear. So let go of the fear. It's a no thing anyway. And hang on to the faith, which is a thing. Wayne Dyer says, think of the word God, G-O-D. And then think that the G has just slipped away. So now it's just O-D. And then the D slips away, and now you have an O. And recognize that that O is a zero. You have nothing. And the, the thing to learn about this, the metaphysical idea behind it is zero cannot be divided. It cannot be divided. There cannot be, it, you can't take anything from it. Well, you can get minus things, I guess, but zero is a wholeness. So. 
think of that yourself. When you let go of all the extraneous things, what's left isn't uh, nothing that's not worth anything. It's a zero that's the most important, most uh, valuable thing there is. The most valuable thing there is. That's what you are, that's what I am. And what would get us to forget? What would get us to forget that who we really are is this great spirit, this great one mind? What could, what could possibly be stronger than that? And it's that simply our own human willpower and our, our lack of our choices. Choices, we have the power of choice is the greatest freedom of all. And we have the power to choose yes or no. We have the power to shape, choose, say, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. We have the power to forget who we are temporarily. But that thing itself is going to come shaking you in the middle of the night, 3 a.m., Wayne Dyer says, 3 a.m., it's going to shake you in the middle of the night and say, who are you? Wake up. Be you. One of the things that could get in the way is a lack of joy, a lack of fun, a lack of um, being with other people. And I know many of us have really missed that in this last 10 years, well, however long we've been doing this pandemic, five months. We've missed our friends, we've missed our families, we've missed connecting with them in person. We, meaning me, very grateful for the technology because I get to connect with Zoom or with Facebook Live or Facebook or telephone. I get to connect, but it's not the same thing as having the person right there beside you and being able to hug that person or even hold that person's hand. So I know all of that is true. And I know that we're greater than our excuses. We're greater than our circumstances. Those of you who are on Reverend Karen's or Reverend Patty's Facebook pages know that they've got just come back from this wonderful trip, which featured beauty and friendship and togetherness and um, and and exercise and all sorts of good and good food, all sorts of good things. And that is such a good thing. It is such a good thing to have vacation, to have time for yourself. And even if it's a daily walk, even if it's some time that you set aside for you, Speaking of which, I am not going to be with you next week or the following week. I am taking two weeks vacation. And I'm very pleased that I'm doing this. I was encouraged to do so by my board of trustees, who are fantastic beings and very loving and kind. So anyway, I won't be here, but the good news is Reverend Judy is going to come back from Northern California to be right here next week. So you'll be in wonderful hands, very warm, loving hands, committed and uh, tender. I'm never ever abandoning you, but I sometimes do need a vacation. So what do we know about the Tao of freedom? The Tao says, yes, they're opposites. It says, yes, there's a principle of Wu Wei, which is a principle of accepting what is. So join me because I needed practice this morning in accepting what is. So I accept what is and recognize that it's enough because I am enough. I'm made of God's stuff and you are enough. So we come to that place what can we do to remind ourselves who we are, 
and what we are, what we are, how we are living, what we are living as. And when we do that, when we do that, when we look after ourselves, we invite the universe to look after us as well. This morning, our, our little sweet, um, sweet bouquet of chrysanthemums. The mums are called mums. So the the mums here, are my to my right, the are a gift from one of our good friends, Kathy Story and Tony Sparks. And a beautiful card came with them. This is these were for me, and the card said, "Find your joy." And I know that's the truth. When we find our joy, and it bubbles up. What we found is our connection with Source. So I know you join me every single week. I know that you put into practice these principles as best you can because they're principles to live by. They're principles that have changed lives and continue to change lives. I know that I'm talking to at least one person whose life has become better because they've met the science of mind and are using it. I know there's far more than one. I'd like it to be every single one, whoever's watching, to know that right here, right now, that presence in you is supporting you to know yourself fully, to practice this principle and to let it speak through you as infinite truth, infinite love. The song we started with, the Ready, is a song that touches me deeply because I think so many of us put off our good, our love, our well-being. We take care of other things or maybe we're just too busy to do that deep work. So ready for good, ready for love, ready for like, no, this is it. I have to sing the song in my head. Be thankful, I'm not singing it out aloud. <laughs> ready for good, ready for love, ready for, ready for life. And now I'm good and ready. I'm good and ready. We, that, I'm good and ready now. And we can hear, I could hear, <laughs> I could hear the impatient chatterbox in my mind going, I'm good and ready now. No, I'm good and ready now for my good. And I know so are you. I know that spirituality is unchained right here, right now. And the Tao of freedom is all of ours, and so it is. And now I'm going to pray, and Jimmy's going to make sounds on the piano to accompany me. Big sounds, I guess. So, let's know this together. There is only one life. That life that is God's life is whole, complete, and perfect. It is that which is the Alpha and the Omega, that which is eternal and immortal, that which has no beginning and no end. It's the isness of being, and it is everywhere present. It's the magnificence of nature, the beauty, the goodness, the growth, the evolution of consciousness. So what I know is that this thing itself is moving through each one of us right now. It's moving through me. And I speak this word for everyone in the first person. I choose perfect health. I know that the wholeness of the divine is my wholeness. I know that there's a pattern of perfect life within every cell, every tissue, every function, every fiber of my being. And that I am awakened to the source of my good, at the source of my supply to that which is beating my heart, that which is moving through my body, which is life. Life is moving through me now. And I know that this same source 
is the source of my supply and so that there's more and more prosperity and I see and perceive good everywhere greater financial prosperity yes and greater friendships greater deepening greater experiences greater awakenings and I see it as that thing that is the the greatest love of all and the love for self and the love for others so that there is an opening within me that says yes to life to love to good and to all those things all the time I know for myself good experiences good rest good balance and I know for each one that any fear is right now by means of this prayer uprooted and re released into the nothingness that, that it came from. Any, any dis-ease is uprooted and cleansed and purified and replaced with vigorous, vital health, aliveness, life. And I know and know that I know that it's good and good only. There is good for me, there is good for you, there is good for all, and we ought to have it, and so it is. And now Ellendale is going to sing another song. Well, like uh, Heather said, we all have this thing inside of us, and it's uh, absolutely good. It's uh, immeasurably powerful. It's also the tenderest love, and and uh, it's God, and it's the presence of Him.
It's beautiful. Thank you so much. This is the time that we uh, share our gifts, our tithes, our offering. And um, I don't have... I don't have the number with me, but we have a text to give, and I know that in the comments it has been included. Uh, so you can text right now. All you do is t type that toll-free number, and when it says give, you put how much you want to give. Or if you don't want to do that, you can go to our PayPal page, and that's also in the comments. Or you can just write a check and send it in. We'll gladly take it. We, we appreciate we appreciate so much that you're part of this center. We know that you're way more than your financial contribution, but if you are contributing, thank you. Big or small, it doesn't matter. It tells us that we are important, that this center is important to you. And I'm so very grateful. So, um, do you know the offering? Without, I, I have to read it or I must mess it up. My offering is my acceptance of God as a source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, and so I invite you to go to Coffee and Conversations and uh, the prayer room. It's all in one place today and uh, immediately after service. And also then at 12 o'clock, Mary, uh, Mary Brogdon has Conscious Connections for you to go to. And then have a wonderful couple of weeks. I will miss you, but I will see you later. We're going to close with the peace song. So, stand up. <laughs> <laughs>
Adiós.